Hello, this is Douglas Eby, the author of the Talent Development Resources series of sites. My guest today is Dr. Cheryl Errett, a clinical psychologist specializing in fertility, recovery from trauma, and creative artist issues. This is a sample from our much longer interview, which lasts about 50 minutes. Hello, Dr. Errett. Hi, thanks for having me on. There are some specific issues that I, you probably address in therapy. There are a number of actors like Christian Bale, and Shia mm-hmm. LaBeouf is another who's had a, a quote, bad boy image. Some of those actors with those kind of qualities uh, coming to see you, and how can you help them respond constructively? Douglas, I need to respond to this one in sort of a general way because, I, as I, I know you know, I can't say who I'm working with and, and who I'm not working with. Sure. The, the question you're asking is interesting because it, of, of the multiple levels to it. I think that the particular type of kind of bad boy image phenomenon is something that happens with men uh-huh. and boys more, more frequently and those tend to, for women, they just manifest differently. The B word gets attached or it comes, uh, the misogyny and sexualization comes out. It's not a, oh, wow, there's a bad boy image, which is, I think, loved as much as hated for the guys. I'm not saying it's okay to act that way, but they're not doing it because they're having a great time. Dr. Eric continues in the longer interview. How common is trauma or difficulty in childhood uh, an issue for creative people? I think that people who go into a field where they really roll up their sleeves and get into the nitty-gritty of the painful aspects of being a human being, shame and, uh, and, and betrayal and disappointment, devastation, all of these things that are sort of in the muck of humanity. Right. People don't tend to delve and want to delve into those really messy feelings unless they have some relationship with those messy feelings. Again, Dr. Eric continues with more comments. I asked her a question uh, re- regarding the idea of the shadow self that psychologist Carl Jung talks about. Jung really knew something about all this. There, the notion that Jung had that we need to meet the shadow, we need to get to know the shadow parts of ourselves, or else it will rule us. I think that was a really important thing, that if we allow the, the parts of ourselves that we want to say, oh, no, no, that's not me mm-hmm. at all. No, I'm, I'm 100% good and everything is fine. Those people have a shadow also, but it flies under the radar, and they're not able to monitor it, and they're not able to choose how they act and react as well as someone who is able to look at the whole self and say, well, I'm not as crazy about this part of me or this impulse that I'm having, but it's there, and I need to keep an eye on it. You did a recent Huffington Post Live program called A Brilliant Sacrifice talking about the idea of mental disorders being linked to creative genius, one of my favorite topics. (laughs) (laughs) And you you commented to the effect that artists are fearful of dulling their minds with drugs for depression, for example, and also having deep concerns about losing their creativity if they let go of their pain. What what can you say about creative people uh, who have worked through pain in, in therapy or, or however they've done it and how it affects their creative work? Well, I do hear quite a bit from people who say my medication is something that I'm afraid to take all the time because it either it does dull me or I worry that it's going to dull me. I worry that that I won't be able to access myself. I yeah. want to clarify, though, I hear this a lot from people who, who come in and have been taking medication elsewhere, 
and we're just starting to work together, and a lot of times I check in and find that a general practitioner has done the prescribing rather than a psychiatrist who specializes in psychotropic medication. And, and speaking of art and creativity and all of that, I firmly believe that those medications can be very, very helpful when they are prescribed in the right way. But that, yeah. is, an, that is an art as well. It's both an art and a science. Dr. Errett covers a number of other topics, including how mental illness can be traced to some form of emotional dysregulation. One of her areas of expertise is trauma therapy, and she talks about how trauma can lead to self-blame, shame, and very negative beliefs about the self, all of which can impact creative people and creative work. The sensitivity and the ability to go there, wherever there may be, is a, a, a gift and a talent. But getting stuck there is no fun for anyone and is not required in order to do good work. As a matter of fact, I believe that that has it backwards, that if you can take good care of yourself and then visit there, everybody wins. For more information about the full-length interview, visit the creative mind.net. Thanks for listening.